Ladies and gentlemen, building the post-pandemic world, the path to a more sustainable, safe and resilient society is a challenge for all of us at this moment in time. We have all been hit by the pandemic heavily and in many ways. The European Commission has put the efforts to overcome this crisis at the heart of its current and future work. Our 2022 work program is largely designed to rebuild a post-COVID-19 Europe, accelerate the twin green and digital transitions, and build a fairer, well-connected and more resilient society. The pandemic has impacted all the EU countries, as well as our neighbours. The European Union has stood by its neighbours during the pandemic and we pledge to continue to assist their recovery. We have supported our Eastern partners by swiftly providing over 1 billion euros for short-term emergency response, health systems and socio-economic recovery. Together with the World Health Organization, we have helped to deploy more than 4.2 million vaccines to the region, one-third of the vaccines administered in the Eastern Partnership countries so far have been provided directly or indirectly by the EU, including through COVAX. The EU also acted decisively to support the Western Balkans by immediate assistance and by mitigating the economic impact of the crisis. We have also associated the region in an unprecedented way to mechanisms and measures normally reserved to EU member states. More specifically, we provided a COVID assistance package worth of 3.3 billion euros for medical equipment, budget support and help for the private sector. We founded and donated 3 million doses of vaccines to the Western Balkans and almost 1.8 million vaccines have arrived through COVAX. And more is coming. We will continue to help the partners to reach similar vaccination rates that exist in the EU today by the end of 2021. Let me use this opportunity and thank Romania, who was quick to react and has responded by donating hundreds of thousands of vaccines to our partners in the Western Balkans, to Moldova, Ukraine, Egypt and Tunisia. Beyond immediate assistance and the vaccines, we need to address the severe long-term socio-economic impact of the pandemic. The economic and investment plans, both for the Eastern Partnership and the Western Balkans, will play a key role in this. Our ambitious economic and investment plan for the Eastern Partnership is about creating a stronger, energy secure, resilient and more competitive region. The plan, put forward in July, will mobilize 2.3 billion euros from the EU budget. We expect that it will leverage up to 17 billion euros in public and private investments to stimulate jobs and growth, connectivity and the green and digital transition. This includes priority investment projects, transport connectivity, the extended core 10T network and high impact quick win projects investing in logistics centers, border crossing points, as well as the rehabilitation of airports and seaports. Investing further in digital transformation will narrow the digital divide by extending the benefits of the digital single market. This will support the development and upgrading of the broadband internet infrastructure, in particular in remote and rural areas so that at least 80% of the households have access to affordable high-speed internet. In the energy sector, we will invest in sustainable energy, energy efficiency, energy connectivity and renewables. We will also reinforce cross-border and inter-regional energy connections and help increase energy security. The Economic and Investment Plan contains a set of flagship initiatives for each of the partner countries. These are priority projects with tangible results, jointly identified with the partner countries. For Moldova, we have five flagship initiatives, including investments in energy efficiency, improving district heating systems and in connectivity, anchoring Moldova in the 10T network. 
connectivity features strongly among all the flagships for Eastern Partnership countries. Thus, in Armenia, the EU will help boosting the north-south transport corridor, and in Azerbaijan, digital connectivity and greening of Baku port. Two flagship projects for Georgia are directly linked to Romania across the Black Sea. The Black Sea Connectivity Initiative will improve data and energy connections with the EU, while the Transport Connectivity Across the Black Sea Initiative will improve physical connections with the EU. The Economic and Investment Plan for the Western Balkans foresees 9 billion euros of funding in the form of grants, leveraging up to altogether 30 billion euros of investments. This represents around one-third of the current GDP of the region and could contribute to over 3% of the real GDP growth in the forthcoming years. Its 10 investment flagships support major road and railway connections, renewable energy and the transition from coal with the help of gas, renovation of public and private buildings to increase energy efficiency and reuse greenhouse gas emissions, waste and wastewater management infrastructure, as well as the rollout of broadband internet infrastructure. The Economic and Investment Plan will not only improve the Western Balkans' internal connectivity, but also help to connect the region with the EU. It will remove or reduce the physical barriers that hinder regional economic integration. The Trans-Balkan Electricity Corridor, for example, will link Romania to Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro, and further down with Italy. The first part of the corridor will be put into operation in 2022, connecting Resita with the Serbian town of Pancevo. The improvement of the navigability of the Danube is another important project, which is of great interest to Romania. Serbia is benefiting from the Connecting Europe Facility Grant for the rehabilitation of the hydropower plant Gerdap Du, the famous iron gates on the Danube. However, the benefits of building new transport links or developing human capital will materialize only if goods can be traded and people can work across borders. It is for this reason that the common regional market was agreed by the leaders of the Western Balkans in Sofia last year, covering the freedoms of movement of goods, services, capital and people. The common regional market will create an integrated economic area that maximizes the benefits of our infrastructure investments, make the region more attractive for investors and set the course for future integration into the EU's single market. The COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the fragility of global supply chains. Besides an energy crisis, we also see delays in goods shipment and increasing logistic costs. We need to work together to make supply chains shorter and more reliable, better adapted to our shared goals, including the reduction of their environmental and climate impacts. The actions I have mentioned will serve this overarching purpose. The COVID-19 pandemic was a tough lesson. Now it is for us to learn from it and take action. I wish you all a fruitful discussion.